हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक फॉर आवर ऑनलाइन क्लास एंड होप यू ऑल आर रीडिंग समथिंग सो प्लीज डू रीड दिस इज नॉट अ जोक आई नो दैट इट्स नॉट लाइक अवर थियरी क्लासेस वेयर वी ऑल सिट टूगेदर एंड टेक द क्लास बट आई नो इट्स बिट डिफिकल्ट टू टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट बट वी हैव नो अदर गोल राइट नाउ वी हैव टू फोकस एंड स्टे फोकस्ड सो टूडे we will be continuing with our previous class the myo functional appliances and in the last class we have seen the introduction part and all those definitions and its uh, action and uh, all those kind of stuffs and today we will be continuing it and let's go in detail into the topic so what are all the changes that can happen with a myo functional appliance the changes then the functional appliances are designed to change the patient's pattern of function alteration the jaw relationship and they reprogram the neuromusculature thus altering the functional matrix of the face okay so when you are inserting a myo functional appliance into the patient's oral cavity so what are all the changes that can happen so first of all it alters the pattern of function that means previously the patient was having a class 2 uh, function and now you have advanced the mandible into a class 1 or into a more uh, anteriorly positioned so thereby you are uh, thereby you are entirely changing the pattern of function and you are altering the jaw relationship from a class 2 to class 1 right now from a retrognathic mandible to a prognathic uh, sorry in an orthognathic mandible you are changing the uh, relationship of the jaws from a class 2 to class 1 and reprogram the neuromusculature all the muscles that have attached on to the uh, mandible it is getting reprogrammed okay and altering the functional matrix of the face so <clears throat> let's go in detail let's see what are all the things that will happen when you are just inserting a myo functional appliance into the patient's oral cavity first of all there will be an increased contractile activity of the lateral pterygoid muscle we knows that the lateral pterygoid muscle is responsible for the anterior and posterior movement of the mandible the protrusion and retrusion of the mandible yeah got it the lateral pterygoid muscle is responsible for the anterior and posterior movement of the mandible so when you insert an myo functional appliance into the patient's mouth the first thing to happen is that you are altering the contractile activity of the lateral pterygoid muscle then what happens is there will be an intensification of the repetitive activity of the retrodiscal pad so once you ask the patient to keep this thing keep the myo functional appliance into the oral cavity each and every time because we are asking the time period is about 4 to 5 hours a day initially and night time well. so at that time what is happening is when the patient is keeping this for continuously for one hour in between we have a tendency always to swallow at least our saliva will be swallowing alle nammal nammada umineerengil nammal erakki kondirikkum appo ee oru myo functional appliance vaayil vechittu nammal umineer erakkana samayath endha undavo nu cheyyanal ore prashan patient back ilku kondu nokkum korchu kuda front ilku varu pinne mandible back ilku povu nokkum korchu kuda front ilku varu angane aanu undavo so each time the patient swallows at least the saliva the mandible always keeps on irritating the retrodiscal pad so there is an intensification of the repetitive activity of the retrodiscal pad got it and then thus there will be an increase in the growth stimulating factor and enhancement of the local mediators that is our sth and reduction of the ro- local regulators that is the pre contrablast uh, multiplication uh, restraining factor and then there will be a change in the condylar uh, tubercular orientation and there will be an additional growth at the condylar cartilage and then there will be additional subperiosteal ossification of the posterior border of the mandible resulting in a supplementary lengthening of the mandible got it so initially you keep the appliance patient's mandible moves anteriorly when the patient's mandible moves anteriorly lateral pterygoid muscle is getting Uh, contractile activity there will be an increased contractile activity in the lateral pterygoid muscle then there will be an intensification of the repetitive activity of the retrodiscal pad and then there will be an increase in the growth stimulating factors when the growth stimulating factors are increased there will be an enhancement of the local mediators that is our sth hormones 
and then there will be a reduction in the local mediators local regulators that is the pre contrablast multiplication uh, restraining factor and then change in the condylar tubercular orientation the condylar tubercular orientation gets changed and then there will be an additional growth in the cotyledonal cartilage and then there will be an additional subperiosteal ossification of the posterior border of the mandible resulting in a supplementary lengthening of the mandible so this is what is happening when you insert a myofunctional appliance in the patient's oral cavity let's see in this picture so here you can clearly see that so here you can clearly see that this is the particular area which is called as the retrodiscal pad the disc okay so this is the retrodiscal pad which means this uh, temporal frenum and the uh, uh, mesco mandibular frenum so these all constitutes the retrodiscal pad so this is the uh, glenoid fossa and here you can see the lateral pterygoid muscles that are getting attached here in this particular portion you can see the lateral pterygoid muscles which are attached so when the patient when you insert a myofunctional appliance into the patient's oral cavity the mandible moves anteriorly right the mandible moves anteriorly so whenever the mandible is moved anteriorly so you can see there is an relationship here previously it was here in this particular region now it is shifted anteriorly so means that is an irritation that is happening retrodiscal pad always there is an repetitive activity that is happening in the retrodiscal pad so what happens is when that happens there will be all those enzymatic and all those uh, hormonal changes will happen all those sth ka function will happen so what happens the mandibular condylar cartilage shows a tendency to grow backward and this condylar Uh, glenoid fossa have a tendency to migrate a bit anteriorly in order to adapt the condyle inside you can see here so this glenoid fossa moves anteriorly a bit so that it can adapt the condyle in the uh, inside and thus a resultant lengthening of the mandible happens so this is what is happening when you insert a myofunctional appliance in the patient's oral cavity right so this is what the graber and venestral have given in the textbook so a likely scenario of a class 2 correction that is the scenario of a skeletal effects are first of all the condylar growth amount during the treatment will be 1 to 3 mm the condyle have a tendency to grow backward the condylar growth will be around 1 to 3 mm fossa will get displaced anteriorly growth and adaptation occurs which is around 3 to 5 mm so the glenoid fossa have a tendency to come anteriorly which is which will migrate around 3 to 5 mm elimination of the functional retrusion avaru back like vachi kadikunda and line or elimination undavum which is around 0 to 1.5 mm and more favorable growth direction which is around 0.5 to 1.5 mm and then withholding on uh, withholding of the downward and forward maxillary growth which is around 1 to 1.5 mm that is in headgear effect which we say you call this effect as an headgear effect so previously i have told when you insert an uh, appliance into the oral cavity where uh, myofunctional appliance in the oral cavity the force direction which is happening on the mandible will be anterior but since the mandible pushes the myofunctional appliance backward it pushes the maxilla backward so that have an shows an headgear effect so there will be an withholding of downward and forward maxillary growth so it withhold the maxillary growth for around 1 to 1.5 mm and the differential upward and forward maxillary growth is reduced for around 1.5 to 2.5 mm headgear effect will be there around 0.5 to 0 mm so these are the uh, likely scenario which is happening for a class 2 to, to get corrected on the skeletal tissues so let's come into the cephalometric criteria this is what i have told in the last class because i will be taking this separately so what are all the cephalometric criteria okay so before going into the cephalometric criteria we can just let say something about cephalometrics so what is a cephalometrics what is it taken for yeah it is a two dimensional two dimensional uh, what to say two dimensional copy of the entire skull it is a two dimensional copy of the skull an x ray you can see a radiograph so this is the particular machine which uh, we use uh, to take in uh, lateral surf we call so here you can see this machine so this is the cephalostat which helps in holding the patient's uh, head in a correct position so that uh, uh, for example if one patient is standing like this you are taking in lateral surf what if the other patient stand like this or the other patient stand like this so all these 
in this particular way if you are looking if each direction means that uh, cephalometric left cephalometric radiograph is not standardized in order to get a standardized all patients looking in the same direction same way so we have certain uh, things here which is called as a cephalostat it helps in holding the patient's head in an correct unique position every patient whoever wants to take a lateral cephal they come and stand with this help of this uh, cephalostat there their head will be positioned in a unique manner everyone will have a standardized manner and uh, this is how you they take you will keep or orient the patient's head accordingly so here are the certain uh, calculations for that in order to get a proper parallel image in order to get a proper parallel image you have to uh, have these specifications there so the uh, x-ray shooting and the patient's mid face should be around 1.5 meter distance there should be a 1.5 meter distance meter distance i'm not telling about millimeter or centimeter it is a meter so it should be a 1.5 meter distance from the x-ray source and the patient's midpoint that is a sagittal point and from there to the lateral surf that is placed the cassette that is placed that is inside the cassette we keep the x-ray film and you keep so that and the mid face should be around 10 centimeter distance okay 10 centimeter distance so once you shoot the x-ray you will get a entire correct replica of the skull so this is how a ceph looks like so after tracing the cephalogram this is what you can see all those lines there we have uh, certain uh, anatomical uh, landmarks to be considered let's come into uh, that so when you are looking at the anatomical landmarks you can see a nasal spine you can see the nasal spine you can see the nasal spine there hmm? and uh, cella tersica this is a spinoid bone and inside you can see the cella tersica and this is the orbit which holds our eyeball the orbit and uh, this one is the uh, auditory meatus so this auditory meatus it can be either an internal auditory meatus or external auditory meatus so external auditory meatus is what we consider normally because it is a bit difficult to identify the internal auditory meatus internal auditory meatus means our ear canal ear canal so that is the auditory meatus and then we can see the entire mandible here you can see the maxilla this all area is maxilla but we consider maxilla as the palate we palatal region in the palatal palatal region maxilla so this is our maxilla so we take the palatal portion of the maxilla and we say it as maxilla not as palate because the entire thing here is maxilla you know that and uh, we can see the maxillary and mandibular molars we can see the maxillary and mandibular incisors and we can see the soft tissue outlines here you can see the soft tissue outlines and you can also see the uh, pterygo mandibular rough okay pterygo maxillary rough sorry ptm point so this is said to be an uh, space between the sphenoid bone and the maxilla it is a space that is formed between the sphenoid bone and the maxilla that is our ptm point so we have uh, certain um, short forms for that so the nasal spine here so this is the point which we say point n n so this is orbital that is o this is cella that is s this is the porion which we say for uh, auditory meatus this is the porion po so this is this point is the gnat uh, gonion go gonion so this is the posterior nasal spine anterior nasal spine in this curvature the deepest point is the point a in this curvature the deepest point is point b the anterior most point on the chin is the pogonion the anterior and the inferior most point most anterior and inferior most is the gnathion the inferior most point is the menton so these are the certain landmarks and the uh, for the cephalop matrix cephalogram you will come we will come in detail when we are taking that particular section on cephalometrics no don't worry so this is just to get an idea so you trace this lateral ceph you can see all these landmarks and you just mark these points okay we are using it for certain points so we have cella we have s yes, we have n point n we have gonian we have menton we have this is the uh, articular point which is not mentioned in the previous slide this is a point called as articular articular air yeah. so these are the things these are the anatomical points which we have to consider when we are thinking of a, a myofunctional appliance okay 
So these are the landmarks which we consider when we are thinking of a Maya functional appliance. We have N, we have S, we have AR, we have GO and we have ME. N stands for Nation, S stands for Sella, AR for Articler, GO for Gonion and ME for Mentan. So let's come into the cephalometric criteria of the Maya functional appliance. So analysis of the facial skeleton we have three angular measurements and four linear measurements. Angular measurements are those measurements which we use a protractor to measure that is the angle and linear measurements are those measurements which we use scale to measure our ruler. Scale centimeter to centimeter. distance linear protractor to angular so we use an protractor to ca calculate the angular measurements and we use a ruler or the scale to measure a linear measurement. So we have three angular and four linear, three angular, one is the saddle angle, second one is the articular angle and third one is the gonial angle and uh, four linear that is the anterior facial height, posterior facial height, anterior cranial base length and posterior cranial base length. So let's see. We have to mark the point S, point N, AR, GO and ME and you connect this. First you draw a line that is joining the S to N, then you draw a line that is joining S to AR, then AR to GO, then GO to ME. You connect all this. Now you are getting an angle, now you are getting an angle here NS AR will become one angle. Yes, ARGO, this one will become another angle and ARGO ME will become another angle. So this angle is the saddle angle, this one is the articular angle and this one is the gonial angle, right? So we have the saddle angle, we have the articular angle and we have the gonial angle. It is said that when you add all these three angles, you will get certain values when you measure, right? So when you add all these three angles, the sum of these three angles should be 396 degrees that is considered as normal. If, if it is going above 396 then the patient's growth pattern is considered as a vertically growing patient. More on the negative vertically I you can see if it is angle is more that means it is more of vertical growth pattern. If it is compressing, if it is coming below, that means below uh, 396, that means it is showing a more of horizontal growth pattern. We have two types of growth pattern for a patient. You can, you might have seen certain people there, someone will be having a more square face, that means they are growing in a horizontal manner, they will be a little bit chubby like someone's face will be normal, they are normally growing pattern and the other one, someone will be like a long face, they will have an oval type of long face, which means they are growing in a vertical manner. Chalalkar height to korva irikim, our chabbis irikim, our horizontal growth pattern irikim, our kundava, chalalkar height to kodal irikim, our rana phase madhavali elongated irikim, so they are having a vertical growth pattern. There are certain like me to say who is growing in a normal manner, a normal growth pattern. Okay? Don't think I am boasting myself. So, next one, let's go in detail to all these angles there. Eh? Saddle angle. So, saddle angle is NSAR. NSAR. So the normal value is 123 plus or minus 5. So it helps in the assessment of the relationship between the anterior and posterior posterior lateral cranial base. Okay. The anterior and the posterior lateral cranial base in the relationship cell help you A larger angle means the more posteriorly positioned mandible, mandibular contact. Right? Saddle angle number okay. This angle is the saddle angle. But the saddle angle is the articular clay point. The three back is the entire mandible is positioned backward. Got the idea? So a large angle means posterior condylar position. Mandible is placed posteriorly with respect to the cranial base and the maxilla. So this is the idea. Let's say this is 125. Let's say this is 125. 25. So, if a patient is having a small saddle angle, if the patient is having a small saddle angle, what happens? The patient will have a prognathic mandible. 
if the patient is having a small saddle angle see if the angle is small that means the patient will have a prognathic mandible if it is large if it is large that means the patient will have a retro positioned mandible okay if it is large that means the patient will have a retro positioned mandible got that so what is this compensated so what do you mean by this compensation so everywhere you can see there will be some sort of compensation that is happening so let's say a compensation that have happened here so we told that previously all the sum should be 396. We have to do this. 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 We have to one compensation is the articular angle and gonial angle. If you look at it, it is compensated. It is not articular angle and gonial angle. If you look at that, a non-compensated posterior positioning of the mandible caused by a large saddle angle is very difficult to influence with a myofunctional appliance therapy. So, you want to go for a myofunctional appliance therapy the patient should be have a compensated saddle angle with articular angle and gonial angle right the patient is having a large saddle angle that means the entire mandible is positioned backward patient should have a compensated or a reduced articular angle and a reduced gonial angle in order to compensate for the increase in the saddle angle if that compensation have happened you can go for a myofunctional appliance therapy if that compensation have not happened, you cannot consider a myofunctional therapy for that particular patient. And slightly, saddle angle kudi, articular angle koranyu, gonial angle koranyu. Gonial angle, articular angle, saddle angle in vain to compensate chayidu koranyu daana engil, namak our patient in a myofunctional appliance kudu kampattu. But, if the saddle angle is increased and if the articular angle nor the gonial angle have compensated then you cannot consider a myofunctional appliance therapy means slightly for saddle angle na artha ana karyam kadakkanam eto articular angle ne endha parayanalle nokku so articular angle the normal value is 143 plus or minus 6 so a constricted angle that lies between the upper and lower part of the posterior contours of the facial skeleton a large angle on angle it indicates that the angle is retrognathic larger the articular angle on the angle retrognathic mandible on the ram cherry angle on the angle prognathic mandible on the ram so this angle can be influenced by orthodontic and orthopedic therapy this have uh, nothing that much to do with the functional appliance therapy but functional appliance therapy chay the cardinal e angle corona the item on a corner that is why this angle is not the same as the angle. That is why the orthodontic treatment is not the same as the orthopedic treatment. That is why the decrease with the anterior positioning of the mandible. It decreases with the anterior positioning of the mandible with closing the bite or mesial migration of the posterior segment of the teeth. If the posterior segment have migrated anteriorly, there is a tendency that the lower facial height get to get reduced okay we posterior and anterior migrate to the depth we have a situation if this is the molars if the posterior teeth is migrating anteriorly we have to bite to the bite if you have to bite to the posterior if you have to bite to the posterior this is the maxillary teeth and this is the mandibular teeth okay then we have to bite to the molars if you have to bite to the molars if you have to bite to the molars so if this increases means there is a tendency that the articular angle to get reduced okay apa adhe pole thaneyana ee oru teeth ingane back ilku povanu nundengil endu varum articular angle koodanana tendency illathu adanu ivada parayanathu appo increases with the posterior relocation of the mandible with opening the bite or with distal driving of the molar teeth appo molars back ilku povum thorum bite ingane open aavum molars front ilku varum thorum bite ingane close aavum 
മോളാസ് ഓപ്പൺ ആവും തോറും ഓപ്പൺ ബൈ ടെൻഡൻസി വരും മോളാസ് ഫ്രണ്ടിലേക്ക് വരും തോറും ഡീപ്പ് ബൈ ടെൻഡൻസി വരും ഡീപ്പ് ബൈറ്റ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന സാധനം ഏറ്റവും കൂടുതൽ കണ്ടുവരുന്നത് ഹൊറിസോണൽ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ ഉള്ള ആൾക്കാർക്കാണ് ഓപ്പൺ ബൈറ്റ് കണ്ടുവരുന്നത് വെർട്ടിക്കൽ ഗ്രോയിങ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ആൾക്കാർക്കുമാണ് മനസ്സിലായില്ലേ അപ്പോൾ അതാണ് ഇവിടെ പറയുന്നത് അടുത്തത് നോക്കാം അപ്പോൾ സോ ദിസ് ഇസ് ദി ആർട്ടിക്കുലർ ആംഗിൾ സോ ഹിയർ ഇറ്റ് വോട്ട് ടു സേ ഡിക്രീസ് ആയിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഫ്രണ്ടിലേക്ക് പോകും അതേപോലെ ഇൻക്രീസ് ആയിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഒരു വെർട്ടിക്കൽ ഗ്രോയിങ് പേഷ്യൻ പാറ്റേൺ ആയിരിക്കും അപ്പോൾ ഇതിനകത്ത് നോക്കിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ കാണാൻ പറ്റും ആ ഒരു എന്താ പറയുക ഡിക്രീസ്ഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ദിസ് ഇസ് എ നോർമൽ സോ വെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഡിക്രീസ് യു ക്യാൻ സി ദി ആൻറ്റീരിയർ ഹൈറ്റ് ഈസ് ഗെറ്റിംഗ് റെഡ്യൂസ് വെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഇൻക്രീസിങ് യു ക്യാൻ സി ദി ആൻറ്റീരിയർ ഫേഷ്യൽ ഈസ് ഹൈറ്റ് ഈസ് ഗെറ്റിംഗ് ഇൻക്രീസ്ഡ് സോ ഡിക്രീസസ് മീൻസ് ഹോറിസോണൽ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ ഇൻക്രീസസ് മീൻസ് വെർട്ടിക്കൽ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ അതാണ് ആർട്ടിക്കുലർ ആംഗിൾ പറയണത് നെക്സ്റ്റ് വൺ ഇസ് ഈ ഗോണിയൽ ആംഗിൾ സോ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് മെയിൻലി നമ്മൾ എ ആർ ജി ഒ എം എ ആണ് എടുക്കുക so this is an angle formed by the tangent to the body of the mandible and posterior border of the ramus it expresses not only the form of mandible but also information on its growth pad sorry so this is an angle formed by the tangent to the body of the mandible tangent to the body of the mandible and the ramus from body of the mandible ne ഇതിൻ്റെ ഇങ്ങനെ ടാൻജൻ്റിൻ്റെ ഇടയിലുള്ള ഇതാണ് നമ്മുടെ ജി ഒ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ ഈ ഒരു ആംഗിളിനെയാണ് നമ്മൾ ഗോണിയൽ ആംഗിൾ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ എ ആർ ജി ഒ എം ഇ എ ആർ ജി ഒ എം ഇ ആണ് നമ്മൾ ഇവിടെ എടുക്കുക സോ ഈ ഒരു ആംഗിൾ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് എന്താ പറയുക നോട്ട് ഓൺലി ഫോം ഓഫ് ദി ആംഗിൾ മാൻഡബിൾ ബട്ട് ഓൾസോ ആൻ ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ ഓൺ ദി ഗ്രോത്ത് ഡയറക്ഷൻ സോ എ സ്മോൾ ഓർ അക്യൂട്ട് ഹൊറിസോണ്ടൽ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ ഈസ് ഫേവറബിൾ കണ്ടീഷൻ ഫോർ എൻ ആൻറ്റീരിയർ പൊസിഷനിങ് ഓഫ് ദി മാൻഡബിൾ എ സ്മോൾ ഓർ ഹൊറിസോണ്ടൽ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ ഈസ് ഫേവറബിൾ ഫോർ ആൻറ്റീരിയർ പൊസിഷനിങ് ഓഫ് ദി മാൻഡബിൾ സ്മോൾ ഓർ ഹൊറിസോണ്ടൽ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ മനസ്സിലാവില്ലേ സ്മോൾ ഓർ അക്യൂട്ട് ഹൊറിസോണ്ടൽ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ ആണ് അതായിരിക്കും എന്ത് ഫേവറബിൾ ഫോർ ദി കണ്ടീഷൻ ഓഫ് ആൻറ്റീരിയർ പൊസിഷനിങ് ഓഫ് ദി മാൻഡബിൾ വിത്ത് ആക്ടിവേറ്റർ ലാർജ് ആണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ എന്ത് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ ആയിരിക്കും നിങ്ങൾക്ക് തന്നെ ഇമാജിൻ ചെയ്യാവുന്നുള്ളൂ സ്മോൾ ആയിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് ഹൊറിസോണ്ടൽ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ ആണ് കിട്ടണമെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ലാർജ് ആയിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ ഒബിയസ്ലി ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി യാ ദാറ്റ് അപ്പോൾ ആക്ടിവേറ്റർ ട്രീറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് സ്ട്രിക്ട്ലി കോൺട്രാ ഇൻഡിക്കേറ്റഡ് ആണ് അഥവാ മയോ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ അപ്ലയൻസസ് മൊത്തത്തിൽ തന്നെ സ്ട്രിക്ട്ലി കോൺട്രാ ഇൻഡിക്കേറ്റഡ് ആണ് സോ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ നമ്മൾ മനസ്സിൽ വിചാരിക്കണം വെൻ യു ആർ തിങ്കിങ് ഓഫ് ആൻഡ് മയോ ഫംഗ്ഷണൽ അപ്ലയൻസ് തെറാപ്പി അപ്പോൾ ഗോണിയൽ ആംഗിൾ കുറവാണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഹൊറിസോണൽ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ ആയിരിക്കും ഗോണിയൽ ആംഗിൾ കൂടുതലാണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ വെർട്ടിക്കൽ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ ആയിരിക്കും അപ്പോൾ ഗോണിയൽ ആംഗിൾ കൂടുതലുള്ളൊരു സിറ്റുവേഷൻ ആണ് എങ്കിൽ വി കനോട്ട് തിങ്ക് ഓഫ് മയോ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ അപ്ലയൻസ് തെറാപ്പി ഇഫ് ഗോണിയൽ ആംഗിൾ ഈസ് ലെസ് ഓർ അക്യൂട്ട് ദെൻ വി ക്യാൻ കൺസിഡർ ഇ മയോ ഫംഗ്ഷണൽ അപ്ലയൻസ് തെറാപ്പി ലെറ്റ്സ് ഈ ദി ഗോണിയൽ ആംഗിൾ അപ്പോൾ ഇങ്ങനെയാണുള്ളത് ഗോണിയൽ ആംഗിൾ കുറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ എം ഇ മോളിലേക്ക് പോയി എം ഇ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ മെൻറ്റോൺ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ പോയിന്റ് മോളിലേക്ക് പോയി സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇൻഡിക്കേറ്റ്സ് ആൻഡ് റെഡ്യൂസ്ഡ് ഫേഷ്യൽ ഹൈറ്റ് കൂടിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ എം ഇ താഴത്തേക്ക് വന്നു ദാറ്റ് ഇൻഡിക്കേറ്റ്സ് ആൻഡ് വെർട്ടിക്കൽ ഗ്രോത്ത് പാറ്റേൺ സോ ലെറ്റ് സി വൺസ് എഗെയിൻ നോർമൽ ആണ് ഇവിടെ ഉള്ളത് കുറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ എം ഇ മോളിലേക്ക് പോകും കൂടിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ എം ഇ താഴത്തേക്ക് വരും ഇതെന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഹൊറിസോണ്ടലി ഗ്രോയിങ് ആയിരിക്കും ഇതെന്ന് പറയുന്നത് വെർട്ടിക്കലി ഗ്രോയിങ് ആയിരിക്കും ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ ഗോട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഓക്കെ so next one is the jarabek ratio this is also very important idu short note aayittu choichu kandittund jarabek ratio ennu parayanathu so this is indicates the anterior facial height facial height mottathil nokka annaladana so jarabek ratio ki athu endha parayanu nu cheyna what the jarabek ratio is tells us is a posterior facial height into 100 divided by anterior facial height you will get a particular value a particular percentage right so if that value is less than 62 percentage that means the patient is having a vertical growth pattern if it is more than 65 percentage it is showing a horizontal growth pattern nerthu nammal 396 inde kanakku parnu 
100 by anterior facial height you should get a value between 62 to 65 if the value is below 62 vertically growing above 65 horizontally growing so in total when we are concluding it a compensated horizontally growing patient is ideal for myofunctional appliance therapy saddle angle kodal articular angle and gonial angle onnu koranju kaynal that patient is ideal for myofunctional appliance therapy saddle angle koravana articular angle and gonial angle koranju kaynal adu namukku pattilla okay articular angle koraya nu parna saddle angle koraya nu parna kaynal adinte artham already glenoid force anteriorly aanu ullathu hmm appo pinne adinte veendu nammal korchu kodi front ilikku kondu vannu vekkunnathu nadakkunna kaaryilla appo saddle angle kodal aayirikkanam appo nammade glenoid force korchu backward position da irikkum adine adjust cheyidittu articular angle onnu koranjittundavu gonial angle onnu koranjittundavu angathe oru situation aanengil namukku endiya mandible ne eduthu front ilikku vekka okay got it so any doubts you have don't forget to comment hmm? and any doubts you have don't forget to comment on our comment section we will be uh, we will be very happy to help you all so any doubts you have don't hesitate just comment we will come and give you all the replays so no worries so this is nothing the bhayangar simple aitla oru karyana so rendu rashengil ningal rewind cheythu kandu kanja ningalku egadesh idea kittum namukku main aitu endha nu vachayinal ella case nathum video positive aanu nu kaerthittu namukku my functional appliance therapy cheyan pattilla cheriya oru cephalometric criteria avade important aanu aa oru criteria endha nu nallana nammal innu parnittullathu appo adinathu saddle angle undu articular angle undu gonial angle undu saddle angle koodi articular angle korni gonial angle korni kaynal adu oru compensated aanu അങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരു സിറ്റുവേഷൻ വരുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് മയോ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ അപ്ലയൻസ് തെറാപ്പി ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും സാഡിൽ ആംഗിൾ നോർമലോ ആണ് നോർമൽ ആണ് അതിൻ്റെ ഒപ്പം തന്നെ ആർട്ടിക്കുലർ ആംഗിളും കുറഞ്ഞ് ഗോണിൽ ആംഗിൾ കുറവാണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് എന്ത് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും മയോ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ അപ്ലയൻസ് തെറാപ്പി ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും പക്ഷേ സാഡിൽ ആംഗിൾ നല്ല കുറവ് ആർട്ടിക്കുലർ ആംഗിളും കൂടുതലാണ് ഗോണിൽ ആംഗിളും കൂടുതലാണ് എങ്കിൽ വി കൻ നോട്ട് കൺസിഡർ എ മയോ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ അപ്ലയൻസ് തെറാപ്പി മനസ്സിലായില്ലേ സാഡിൽ ആംഗിൾ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ആംഗിളാണ് ഡിറ്റർമൈൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് നമ്മുടെ കോണ്ടയിൽ എവിടെയാണ് ഇരിക്കണേ എന്നുള്ളത് അപ്പോൾ ആ ഒരു കോണ്ടൈലിൻ്റെ പൊസിഷൻ നോക്കിയിട്ട് വേണം നമുക്ക് എന്ത് ചെയ്യാൻ മയോ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ അപ്ലയൻസ് തെറാപ്പി വേണോ വേണ്ടേ എന്ന് ഡിസൈഡ് ചെയ്യാൻ വാട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് സിമ്പിൾ റൈറ്റ് സോ അടുത്ത ക്ലാസ് ബാക്കിയുള്ള മയോ ഫംഗ്ഷണൽ അപ്ലയൻസസുമായിട്ടുള്ളതായിരിക്കും അപ്പോൾ എന്ത് കമൻ്റ് ആണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിലും ശരി എന്ത് ഡൗട്ട് ആണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിലും ശരി ഡോണ്ട് ഹെസിറ്റേറ്റ് താഴെ പോസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യാം വി വിൽ കം ബാക്ക് ടു യു സോ ബൈ ബൈ